All right, we are streaming now. So this is going to be my first tutorial on how to set up a crack server. And there's many reasons you can do it. Um, one of the biggest reasons is just being able to manipulate your server. There's a lot of plugins that this program, Craft Bucket, allows you to do that just the normal server won't. So just looking at it from a plugins, um, being able to mess with your server perspective, Craft Bucket is like king. So. Um, there's a lot of other reasons too, but again, this is a tutorial on just specifically how to make a cracked server for whatever the purposes may be. There's RPG reasons why, you know, being able to change your name, um, on and on and on and on. But yeah, a normal server, it's very hard to manipulate. A craft booked server, you have much more power, much more control. First off, 20% of the work is just getting the program. So here it is. You want to go on bookit.org, come get the uh, recommended build which is 684 right now click it it'll come to this page don't be intimidated by all this just click on this craft book it dot uh, o dot o uh, one whatever snapshot jar you click that there you go you save this file you might be asking you know where do I put this file so just save it to your desktop somewhere I will show you where to put it you go click on your start button in your windows which is down here in the corner and you do app data so this is a folder you might or might not be familiar with. Once you're in here, you go to roaming, you go to mine .minecraft, and then you go to bin. So you'll see my craft book it file is right here. Put it right there and from wherever it was. If you save this file to the desktop, move it from the desktop to here. If you save it in my documents, move it from my documents to here. This is where you want it. So again, in case you're, uh, you're not sure, it's at app data then you go to roaming then minecraft then bin so starting again here's app data a p p d a t a roaming dot minecraft and bin put it here that's twenty percent of the work is finding the program and getting in the right place once you get it there you want to be able to you want to uh... go on to the next steps and the website helps you with that how does it help you um... here let's close this up for a sec it says get craft book it here on the bookit.org main page when you click that it opens up this page setting up the server so after you've put the full that file in the right place you need to make this file so what do you need to do you need to open notepad once notepad is open you copy this text and you paste it in notepad now this is important if you have a 64-bit machine as it says here you need to change it to x86 so right here this percentage program files it needs to be x86 why because all 64-bit machines if they want to run a 32-bit program they put them in different they put it in a different folder if you don't know what the difference between the two is most likely you have a 32-bit because 64 bits are fairly expensive and most people know what they are when they buy them they usually don't buy them if you want to double check you can go to start right click on computer go to properties and here you go and right here system type 64 bit operating system and here's my specs if you're curious um, so yeah just system type 64 bit so you'll know if you're 64 or 32 so since I'm 64 I changed this to x86 if you're 32 bit leave it alone okay so I'm assuming I'm 32-bit like most of you out there. I'm going to go File, Save As, and this is important. You don't want to save it as a text file. As it says here, save it as a bat file. So go to All Files, which is right here, All Files. Save it to, as they say, run.bat. If you don't make this All Files, it'll make it a text file. So All Files, run.bat. This is what's going to start your server. Where do you save it to? You want to be able to save this to your desktop. Um so you can quickly you know run the file okay so you okay I'll assume that it's on my desktop now and let me double check if, if it's supposed to be anywhere particular so save the document and run yep you just run it what that file does is it starts your server that's all it does it just starts your server so um, what you want to do is I'm gonna show you you've got your file set up you've put it on your desktop and now you're gonna run it so when you double click it don't be scared command prompt is gonna pop up and 
you're going to be able to uh, see your server live. So it's saying my level world has been created. It's starting the region. It has made everything and it's done. Now, the next step they do is, you know, once you've seen all this and your server's up, right now my server's running live. You click stop to stop your server. So you have to remember this. If you ever open your server and you want to stop it, just come in here, stop, press enter, done. It saves, it says here, stopping server, saving the chunks, which means like saving all the different changes you made. And uh, besides saving the changes, like the different things you broke, the different buildings you made, it also saves your inventory. Then it says press any key, so you press any key. Why is that important, what we just did? Besides starting your server, it's going to slowly download files from Minecraft servers to your computer. So you see how I have all these files? I didn't make these. Most of these files were downloaded from Minecraft servers. There's a few custom files here which you can ignore, but if you want these extra files, the only way you can get them is by running this program. So again, 32-bit, copy this into text, copy this into a notepad, save it as run.bat, just as they say, and you don't save it as a text file, you save it as all files. Alright, so you've just done half of what you need to basically to do to get a cracked server. Now, um, the next step is, oh, not that, put that down. You, there's a, oh, let me go back to app data. There's one file in particular you're going to want to edit that this, this tutorial here that book it gives you doesn't really explain very well. So I'm going to explain that to you. So you see this file, once your computer downloads it, it's called a server properties file. This is going to have all the properties of your server. You're going to want to edit it too. So you open Notepad again, which is your friend, and you drag that file into Notepad. And then this, all of its contents are here. So let me explain what each of these things are. Don't mess with the first two lines. The level name is what the name is of the, the particular server you're making. Once you make it, it makes a folder. So, for instance, the first time I started my server, it made a, it made world. So I have world right here. If you change this, it'll make a new world. So if I change this to level name, uh, whatever, uh, blah blah blah, or monkey world, it'll make mo it'll make a monkey world folder. I don't know what hell world is. I'm assuming hell world is the Nether, and I'm assuming if you make this true you can travel to the nether um, but again I don't know if that's the case so I'm gonna set it to true properly and see if I can do that you probably don't want to do that I'd leave it on false but I'm not able to travel in the nether currently on multiplayer so I'm gonna see if by making that true I'm able to do that anyways if you don't know what the nether is or any of that don't mess with it spawn monsters true it, sh it's, it should be set to true as well. What that means is you there's no peaceful or normal mode or whatever on servers. Servers aren't run by the per people playing on them. Servers are run by this file. So the only way to put it on peaceful mode is to make this false. If you make spawn monsters false, then it'll be as it'll be like it's peaceful mode. It'll be like nothing will be spawning at all. If it's on true, then it's like on normal mode. So it, it's all up to you. Do you want to run on peaceful mode? Do you want to run on, on normal mode? If someone logs into your server and he puts it on peaceful mode on his computer, it won't. It just won't go. The monsters will stay. So this this is what decides that. The server decides, not the person. Online mode, I would set to false. It's set to true. That means anyone that is not doesn't isn't using a, a registered nickname, anyone who doesn't have that can't log in. So there's a lot of people that you know they just have I guess cracked clients um, they won't be able to go on your server so I would recommend this to false if you want to set it to true you can but again there might be some people that won't be able to join so it's up to you if someone has a cracked client they can't join if, if it's on true if it's on false then anyone can join spawn animals true you know what that is max servers mine's on five because it's a private server it should never be above 30. If you want to make it above 30, then you probably know enough to, you know, you wouldn't even be reading this tutorial or watching it, I should say. The fact that you're watching this tutorial means you probably don't have a good enough computer that can hold 30 people. So don't go higher than 30. I'm at 5. Just give me a server IP, leave that at 0. 
PvP you should set to false, it's on true when you first get this file. Um, PvP just means if I hit someone by accident, or let's say me and a friend were fighting a creeper together, uh, if he hits me accidentally, I'll lose life. But now that it's on false, I won't lose life. So definitely set this to false. Level C, this is important if you're doing like a 404 challenge. Let's say I set this to a new world name and I want to do four, so let's say I want to do 404 I'm calling the level the folder 404 see so I have one already here 404 challenge this is gonna make a new folder and the seed I would make 404 as well and you can name this whatever you want 404 um, trials or 404 monkeys I don't know it's up to you alright so I'm I fixed it back the way I wanted it Level seed, if you don't know what that is, just set it, leave it empty for now. If you want to make a new world, a new server, with a particular seed, this is how you do it. So let's say I want to make a world with a seed of 515, then I go ahead, put 515 in, I name that world, and it'll make a folder. So here I have a folder called 404 Challenge, that's the 404 world. I typed in 404 Challenge here, and I typed in the seed there, which is 404. Server port, leave that alone. Whitelist is if you want to only allow certain people on. So if you do, you make this true and you separate the names. So name one, name two, name three, whatever they are. You know, the fourth person's name could be Twans, I don't know. Once you do that, only these people can log in. That's what a whitelist is. It means only these people are allowed in. A ban list means only these people are not allowed in. So it's the opposite of a ban list. I have mine set to false because I don't want to have a long whitelist. Spawn protection. This is the area around the place you spawn in a server. <sighs> Alright, so some people they make weird traps and stuff right where you spawn into the server and so that's why they implemented spawn protection so you couldn't make a trap there. You basically couldn't build anything or break anything in that area. I don't have that problem and usually most servers, 99% of you out there won't. So I would set this to 0. If you set this to 10, that means the 10 blocks around the place where you spawn cannot be broken. So if you want to break those, you can't. It's just unbreakable. Um, and this is especially important with something like the survival challenge. If you do a survival island challenge, the island's only so big. If you set that um, protection area up, to too big, it might cover the whole island and then you can't even do the challenge. So that's why I set it to zero. Once you're done, it seems like everything here is the way I want it. Just go file, save. Done. If you ever want to edit it again, just open Notepad, drag the server properties, and there it is. It's editable. Got it? Alright, so I guess that's the first part of setting up the crack server. I'm going to have another part as well. And, uh, I think you've basically, if you've gotten this far, you've done 80% of what you need to do. You've got the run file, which is right here. You've got your craft book it file. You have all your server files because you double clicked and you've actually run this. Um, if I didn't say that, by the way, yes, you definitely want to run this, which is you double click it. So you just go like that, and there you go. And then when it, whenever it's done, oh god, I hope I'm not overwriting something. No, close it. Let me double check my server properties. Did I rename it something? Ooh. A world? Oh, hell world, okay. So I set hell world to true, maybe that's it. Maybe that's that's why it's remaking it. Okay, so world is true. Alright. Anyways. Okay, I'll save that. Everything else seems good, okay. Let's hope that I don't overwrite this world. Here's uh, the, some of the different people on my world. Okay, so part two, I'm going to go into a few more difficulties you might you might run into. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'll be right.